cool. sheaths into the viscerals from above. Yep. And then when you've got the stent grafts, which are inside the first graft, the you blood. come from below and put a second aortic stent graft to cover them on the inside. Yeah. I, I put uh, first, I, I came from the femoral and stay just in the right position, the stent graft, but not open, of course. Then I came from the brachial, put the, all the, the cover stent inside the visceral artery, and then I deploy the visceral artery, and then I deploy the... The, the second abdomen, aortic second stent graft artery. from yep. below. So yep. the, ar the stent grafts to the visceral arteries and the renals are sandwiched between yes, sandwich. two, two grafts. aortic grafts. Yep. Yep. One, the first one, and, and the, the other one of inside, yep. of placed it. from below. That's it. Yeah, it's great, great presentation. Also, I think this technique is it's like uh, endograft for the idiots. I consider yep. myself an idiot for that. So I think that would be great for me. It would be easier yeah, than all the other ones. So I think, and especially in a rupture case, this would be just Probably should be the, right. the, the, the first thing to think about. Yep. Uh, I, my question to you is the following. There's some mathematical model that you can develop to tell us basically what is the relationship of the 30% because I cannot imagine how I'm going to calculate this 30% extra because as you expand one, you can constrict the other stent. It's not a perfect uh, distribution. Yep. So what is the trick to know what's the exact, the perfect uh, relationship between the graphs? Well, what happened? Um, when I, I think it was my f the first case, I did 30% because that's the graph that I did have in that moment. That's why 30%. But in the third case, that I got a type 3 endolic I'm going to show tomorrow, uh, I use like the regular 20% overlap or the oversizing. That's 20% only. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can see that in some, some points, the graph, the, the second graph came from below didn't didn't go in the 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 the, the, the covers yeah they go straight so the leaks come exactly because they didn't do that waves inside the cover stands right. that's why I got a, a, a type three endo leak because of that right what what else could you think about putting between those spaces that you in case you did not oversize I mean there are other products that we can someone put in. So they can glue or it doesn't allow the endo leak. Have you thought about it? Yeah, for example, I, I don't know if Thomas is here, but Thomas likes to put um, onyx <laughs> or glue. I, I, I did it. In the, the, that case, I deployed glue. However, what happened? I never know if I got an endo leak anymore. Because with the CAT scan, <laughs> the glue or the onyx just are ready to pick as the dye, so as the contrast. So when you shoot the cats can say beautiful, but I don't know. I don't know if you have uh, a endo leak there, but the glue is masking or uh, the onyx is masking that. So that's the, I think that's the problem with the onyx. I know that Thomas loves onyx. Uh, however, that's the point. You cannot uh, follow these patients because you never know. But Armando, your point was that the second aortic endograft has to be oversized by 30%, not 20%. Not 20%, 30%. Okay. It's good. Any yes, other I, I just have two questions. One, there's a lot of um, sheaths and wires in the aortic arch with this, with this technique. Have you observed any strokes in the patients from all Actually, that? Actually, I have only the two patients with uh, aortic arch. Uh -huh. That's uh, no patient got a stroke, uh, but only two patients. So. And then the second question would be, once the sandwich is created, it would seem that that would be a pretty fixed area. And if the aneurysm was tortuous and shrinks, is there any chance of these graphs kinking because they're fixed at one place as the aorta remodels? Well, uh, uh, for Reno, uh, I can tell you it's absolutely possible because I have this uh, complication in, in chimney. So uh, in renals, you must to deploy a, 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 a barrier stance. It's, 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 you have to do it. But for SMA or celiac axis, uh, I, I don't see that. However, uh, I'm trying to talk to the guys from Guar. Uh, if, uh, if you do this with uh, Viaban, uh, that's going to be um, more difficult to get a kinking in the renal artery. 
However, the promise viable is impossible to do because you cannot see anything after you deploy. Just nothing. Um, Armando, that's some um, really technical wizardry. And um, if you add some onyx to that, you're really talking about a high-priced repair, to be sure, at least what we pay, we pay for these devices. Um, in terms of the patients, in particular, with aneurysms of chronic dissection etiology, many of these patients are young. A substantial proportion of them will have syndromic conditions, Marfan's and the like. This patient was Marfan. Yeah, uh, and I certainly am in the majority opinion that the standard for repair of an aneurysm of chronic dissection is open surgery. And it occurred to me in this case that you converted a extent one aneurysm into an extent two repair because you then stent grafted the entire abdominal aorta. Uh, and I think uh, that that is not a good thing to do in terms of the risk of spinal cord ischemia. Uh, obviously, you were careful to qualify that this patient was not a candidate for open operation, uh, but many, uh, and I would go so far as to say most patients with aneurysms of chronic dissection etiology tend to be the younger ones, and accordingly, uh, they tend to do well with conventional repair. Yes, uh, uh, actually, in this case, I cover not the total abdominal aorta. As you see, I just finished above the inferior mesenteric artery. So keep like um, uh, seven and six centimeters of the uh, natural aorta without stent graft. And as you said, it's, 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 it's real. Uh, if a young patient with aortic dissections have more probability to get a, uh, if you cover all the uh, thoracic and abdominal aorta for, uh, to get a palaplegia, it's, it's true. And another point you didn't ask me, but uh, you know, uh, in the beginning, I always drained the, the spinal cord fluid, always in this case. However, and I got a, a, a huge problem in the ICU in three of these patients, like uh, pneumoencephalus. Some of the patients got a, a, a respiratory arrest because, because of that. They got a, a bleeding of the, the liquid. So in this moment, I don't use... Uh, 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 spinal cord drainage, just do it if I got a, like a paraplegia or par parapsizes. So the another point I didn't find uh, actually in my, in my case is uh, no end case of paraplegia in that moment, but I just treat uh, as I, I show type one, two or three. That's a very long disease, not a short one, but I didn't get. Gustavo, would you uh, like to comment on this? Is this going to make fenestrated and branch grafts unnecessary? <laughs> Be tough now. <laughs> That's Frank. <laughs> you want this microphone? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think Armando, that you should be parabenized for this technique innovative, and it certainly will have a role. I think. Eu acho que a dificuldade que a gente tem é que essa técnica desafia o princípio básico de engenharia dessas próteses modulares, que é a conexão entre os componentes. Mas, evidentemente, como ele mostrou, que, existe, que se pode é, é, ter o selamento completo do saco. É, eu pergunto é, se essa, como já foi falado pelos comentadores, não seria a técnica de escolha num paciente que se tenta fazer um reparo endovascular em uma situação de urgência ou de emergência, também nos pacientes com dissecções agudas ou crônicas, em que é, existem vasos que se originem do falso lumen ou do lumen verdadeiro, se, se não se poderia é, fazer fenestrações de forma a facilitar é, o selamento das, das fenestrações no septo do, do, da dissecção. Eu acho que todas essas potenciais indicações eh, podem ser exploradas. Eu tenho uma pergunta, Armando, técnica para ti e para todos que fazem aqui chaminé numa circunstância ou outra. 
qual que é a endoprótese que tu mais recomenda para o corpo principal? E, dois, uh, qual, quais as endoprótices que tu recomenda para fazer a chaminé numa situação de uma chaminé curta, como seria um aneurisma justa renal, e numa situação de uma chaminé longa, como nesse caso que tu apresentaste? Muito boa apresentação. Tá. Obrigado uh, pelo comentário. Obrigado. Uh, em relação à prótese, amanhã eu vou estar mostrando que eu praticamente fiz com todas as próteses, inclusive com o Zenit, com todas as próteses, efetivamente. Se você me perguntar que eu mais me adapto, sem dúvida, excluder ou tag. São as próteses que eu, que eu sinto que ela, se, que ela se molda melhor a técnica de sanduíche. Mas amanhã eu vou estar mostrando, eu vou estar mostrando vários casos que eu acho que é uma outra grande vantagem da técnica de sanduíche. Eu posso fazer com qualquer prótese. Né? Qualquer, eu não digo, tem umas muito ruinzinhas aí, que eu não vou comentar, não me pergunta quais são, mas a maioria das próteses, todas, a maioria das próteses que eu vou mostrar amanhã, eu, eu faço com elas. Outro dado importante é que é, há dois anos, quando eu fiz essa técnica, eu até conversei com o Thomas Fogart, que eu queria como é que eu podia patentear isso. Ele falou, oh, técnica você não, não tem como patentear. E eu não conseguia desenhar uma prótese efetivamente para isto. Eu não conseguia desenhar uma prótese. Eu estava na Itália, agora fui no congresso italiano, e depois eu tirei férias um fim de semana, e estava em frente ao Lago de Como, eu acho que o Lago de Como me... Me deu uma, uma ideia, então eu acordei um dia, eu tenho essa prótese já, então eu estou patenteando a prótese, e, e eu acredito que uh, essa prótese ela vai conseguir resolver não só os problemas do aneurisma da horta, como eu vou estar mostrando amanhã, a horta ilíaco, como também tórico abdominal e de arco aórtico. Então, estou na fase de patente agora. Thank you.